Right guys, we're back with Star Control after some stupid exams. Well, not stupid, but uh, mock GCSEs. I'm sorry, it's taking so long again. Uh, mock GCSEs got in the way quite a lot, um, as well as um, going to Switzerland. Things like that it got in the way, which was quite annoying. Uh, and I miss I miss this game. I've, I've missed it for too long. I need to get back on track. It's been annoying because I've been wanting to do that for so long, and it's still still isn't sticking but anyway back to the game we're here I'm gonna upload two Star Control videos tonight it's gonna be amazing uh, and we can get back on track but I'm going to Beetlejuice today in this episode anyway and we are going to finally go and meet these people the Beetlejuice who are called the Sirene who the Aralu told us about uh, ages ago like how many episodes back now like 25 episodes ago so let's uh, let's go and meet these people they've got a uh, Oh, here they are. Hello. Space vessel. Be warned. This slave world and its inhabitants belong to the Urquan. I am Starbase Commander Talana of the slave planet Gaia. Your ship is not responding to standard hierarchy identification sequences. You are therefore classed as independent. And what? Is my monitor display correct? Is that a human commanding that vessel? Who are you? Uh, I, I am Captain Turbo Diesel of the flagship Nova Mace. Uh. Hello, Captain. But you haven't answered my question fully. Who are you here? Where are you from? Has the slave shield been lifted from Earth? Are the Urquan finally defeated? Simply put, Captain, what do you want from us? Look, friend, I appreciate your offer, but we don't want your help. Why? I'll tell you why. Because we're not going to do anything to antagonize the Urquan. That's why. We may not like slavery, but it's a damn sight better than our alternatives. Below us, we have a beautiful world. Maybe it's not Syra, but at least it's a home. That's a lot more than we ever had before the war, before the Urquan became our masters. So these people, I always said these guys, these people got their world, something happened to their world, beautiful Syrah, whatever it was. So what's Talon doing here? What are they doing on this new planet? What happened to their old world? I want to know. I want to know what happened. Something obviously happened that was bad, and I want to know what happened. So tell me. Tell me what's going to happen, man. Go. Cool person uh, yeah or should I ask something else like what about their people or, or, or the third one I don't know I'll just go with the first one when the Urquan conquered us over 20 years ago I was only a young girl living in Habitat 31 my older sister Diani was a starship officer in the space patrol she was part of the final defense at Raynet she didn't make it back when the Urquan caught us in open space, we all thought we were going to die. But then, instead of killing us, the Urquan offered us a choice. We could join the ranks of their combat thralls, or we could be slave-shielded in our homeworld. Like the people of Earth, we chose peace. We became fallow slaves. When the Urquan told us to return to our homeworld, we explained that we had none. Urquan Master Nine explained that they had encountered this situation before, and if we would provide them with a list of our requirements, they would use their extensive astronomical data stores to find a planet for us. So we told them about Syra, about the color of its sky, about the abundant life forms, about the fertility of the soil and seas. Less than an hour later, we received a terse message from Master Nine. We were to proceed to these coordinates and disembark. This was to be our new home. But our new world, Gaia, was everything we described. We've been searching for a home planet for 75 years, and in the end, it was our enemy who gave one to us. I grew up on a small island off the main continent. And like all of my people, we lived each day under the sick, red glow of the slave shield. 
When the Urquan arrived seven years ago to refurbish and recruit the Starbase, I was selected as the new commander. So yeah, of course, the Cyrene were like the third last to go down. It was the Cyrene, the Yeha, and the Shafixti last, and the Cyrene were of course like told to go away. Um, so yeah. We've been through the stars for almost 75 years, ever since the death of Syra, our home planet. We joined your alliance, and I use the word joined loosely, because we had no other choice. The Fox were raiding our slow habitat columns, and we had nowhere else to go. We fought for survival, Captain. Nothing more. When your people on Earth were defeated, the Alliance just plain fell apart. The Yehat and Shofixti retreated to their native stars and didn't want us to follow. The Ariru, those creepy little weasels, just plain bugged out. Vanished, leaving us alone with nowhere to go, smack in the path of the oncoming Urquan Armada. What were we supposed to do? Fight? Two-thirds of our habitat fleet was unarmed. Many aren't even super luminal. We were going to be annihilated if we resisted, and we knew it. When the Urquan surrounded us and started giving orders that all ended with, or die, we took them at face value. We obeyed. In exchange, they gave us Gaia, the planet below. It's a beautiful world, Captain. I wish I could show it to you. So don't misunderstand me. We love our freedom as much as anybody else. But we've got a good life here. And we don't want to lose it. So I guess while the Urquan did put them under the slave shield, they sort of did give them a whole new planet, so I guess that wasn't too bad. Uh... Like I said before, Captain, we would like to help, but we are unwilling to risk losing Gaia. Unless you can find a much more compelling reason for us to get involved, you're on your own. Right, I think we need to learn a bit more about the Cyrene, about their culture. I think that would be about time to, to learn a bit more about that. Are almost identical, almost too close a match to be just a coincidence. Our bodies are very similar, Captain. <clears throat> Except for certain parts. Our cultural development is also mostly parallel. Like you Earthlings, we evolved a society from primitive tribes whose main function were to protect themselves from the large reptiles native to our old world. The main difference between our two sets of cultures, the split in the paths of our development, occurred in what would have been your prehistory, say 5000 BCE. In your world, the agricultural communities were conquered by the more primitive, but also more aggressive migratory herding peoples. This led to a particular kind of sexual and political dominance structure, which pervaded almost all of your Earth cultures until the early 21st century. On Syrah, our only primitive migratory tribes were confined to our mountainous regions. Their herd beasts, the Waima, did not do well in the agricultural basins and plains. The two cultures were isolated until much later when the technological superiority of the farmers curtailed any major conflict. So Syrah was like their earth, I guess. Let's, uh, let's see. It was our paradise, Captain. Our Eden. Earth is the only world we know of whose variety and richness of life even comes close to Syrah. Again, like so many other things about our two species, our worlds were very much the same. At least before you began encasing yours in concrete and plastic. Syrah's gravity was a bit lighter than Earth's and its day was 50% longer. Our diurnal cycle is therefore different from yours. We spend 20 hours awake, followed by 10 hours horizontal. Ah, see, so here we go. I want to know what happened to Syrah. What did happen to Syrah? Did, was there some sort of natural disaster? Or was there a massive this attack? This is very difficult for us, Captain. But I will try to recount those sad days. Like your solar system, Ours had a large population of comets and asteroids. Large meteor impacts, though rare, 
were not unheard of on our planet. So it was not a total shock when an asteroid penetrated our atmosphere and hit the surface. What was odd was that unlike most other meteors, this one was not pulverized on impact. It penetrated the crust and indeed went all the way through to the mantle causing a super volcano. The earthquakes caused by the impact were severe. The magma pumped out of the caldera wreaked significant damage on the nearby terrain, but within a few weeks it had cooled, forming a solid rock bandage over the wound. Within a few months, we had cleaned up the mess. The caldera was calming down nicely, and things were pretty much back to normal. Then, just over a year after the impact, all hell broke loose on the surface of Syrah. Huge calderas were opening all over, not just around the meteor impact, but everywhere. The scope of the disaster is impossible to imagine. Entire cities sliding into oceans of molten lava, kilometer-wide sections of land pulverized by a cataclysmic explosion, and clouds of poison gas and superheated steam created a death shroud around Syrah. Have you ever heard of the Deep Children? What's that? It's the only kind of storyline option I have, so I might as well say it. I don't really know what it means, so I might as well go with it. But I called it though! I knew it was going to be something like that. Yes. Natural disaster. I think so. Aren't they part of the Mycon religion somehow? Mycon, huh? recordings of Mycon hyperwave transmissions from the war. Pretty weird stuff. The Mycons just kind of rambled, never making much sense. They talked a lot about deep children and spears of light, but we couldn't ever understand what they were talking about. Uh, well, what if I told you that the Mycon deep children shatter planet crusts, like what? your Syrah? Of course I what know that. Say? Human, you had better not be joking. Syrah is not a subject for Earth humor. Now what do you mean, shatter planet crusts? How? That is what happened to Syrah, yes, but we presumed it was a natural cataclysm, a meteor. Do you have proof that it was something else, these deep children? I don't have proof, but I'm certain they did it. I... what? I don't even understand what they're talking about. What are these deep children? Oh, what the hell, I'll go with it anyway. You know what? Yeah. There's obviously going to be some sort of storyline here, so... If what you say is true, it would turn my world upside down. You have no sorrow to match what each of us Cyrene feels every day of our lives when we remember what we have lost. Syra, our Eden, the very idea that the Mycons or any alien race may have been responsible for Syra's destruction fills me with burning rage. If it were true, none of us here would rest until we had avenged ourselves on the perpetrators. We would find some way to leave the starbase, locate our starships, and hunt down the evil monsters. Captain, if you ever gather proof of what you say, you must inform us immediately. But until then, do not mention the subject again. It is too painful. Au revoir then, Tana. We will we'll see you later. I'll feed us in. Okay, well there we go. The uh, the Cyrene, everyone. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was truly something else. Um, so yeah, there we go. So, Mycon. Obviously have something to do here with some sort of storyline that we haven't touched on yet. Um, so, what better thing to do than to go and visit the Mycon right now? Go and find something we don't even know what we're looking for deep children go and ask them about it I guess or something I don't know we'll just go and see what happens so nothing there absolutely nothing do we have to go and look on the surface of planets for deep children like we did with, like we did with the beast I don't even know what deep children are I don't even know what we're looking for just see how it goes just so it's sort of one of the first times in the game where I've really had to sort of... Now oh, here we go, here's a planet that looks like belongs to the Mycon. Well, it says it's 
medium temperature anyway. So maybe they live here. Although they did say they live in terrible conditions, so I'm not sure. But it also does look like a very larvary planet, and very cold for a larvary planet. Um, I don't know. Maybe it isn't a larvary planet at all. But yeah, this is the first time in the game where I really have no idea what to do. So I might as well just explore. It's always the answer in Star Control. Tectonic Class 7. It's got a lot of cool stuff on it, though. Oh, there is energy. Okay, we're going down there. There are also some quite nice uh, minerals, which I might want to collect. Um, but yeah, as I say, this is sort of the first time that I have been... Wow, these explosions are very loud, these earthquakes. Um, but yeah, the thing is with Star Control is that there are going to be points in the game... Oh my god, what the hell is that? Oh, that looks... It's like a volcano. Found a fragment of kind of biological encasement. Or shell. Made of incredibly tough, heat-resistant fungal fibers. No sign of the life form, which may have been hatched. Is this it? Is this what we're looking for? Is that the proof? Oh god, we need to get away. So is that? Have I just done it? Have I just fluked it? I don't know. I actually, this is the. As I say, the thing is, the control is when you're stuck, you just explore. But st I still don't really know what I've done. Can you post in the comments, maybe? Like, maybe I'll work it out because I'm putting up two videos tonight, so I'll probably work it out between the two times I'm actually editing this, and then they get put out. They will put out at the same time, but obviously I'm going to edit them with a little bit in between. So maybe I can find out a little bit about this through sort of experimenting in the game, and not saving it. So I don't know. Um, yeah, that'd be cool to go find out. Thank you all for watching this episode. See you next time.